I'm Daniel Colliton. I'm a retired consultant clinical psychologist and current researcher at Newcastle University. My talk was on physical hallucinations in eye disease. One of the challenges in working with hallucinations is really understanding what the phenomena is like, um, because virtually always we're just talking to people about them. And it's really difficult to convey visual experience in words. The main points I wanted to get across were uh, these are fairly common experiences. They're often unrecognized, under-recognized, under-reported. Um, they cause a necessary alarm to the people who experience them. They're not well understood um, and they're not easy to get rid of in themselves. There's an awful lot you can do to help people feel better who've got them. The impact partially comes from just not being able to see what really is there, uh, but it also comes from, initially at least, the experience of what is this thing which is happening to me? How long is it going to last? Am I going to see these things forever now? What will I be able to do about it? Um, so one of the uh, kind of characteristic impacts is the uncertainty the anxiety, particularly at the beginning. The key messages for um, people with these experiences are, firstly, they're not alone. Lots of people do have these experiences. We do know that uh, the severity of your eye disease is the most important factor in whether you get them or not. Beyond that, we're not quite sure why they occur in some people and others, but we're very confident that it is something to do with the eye disease and it's not down to madness or some other type of disorder, unless you already know you've got that disorder. Unfortunately, because we don't really know what causes it, we don't have any very effective treatments for getting rid of it entirely. But most of the impact comes from not the hallucinations themselves so much, but the worries that it sets up in people. They worry that they are gonna go mad or they worry it is going to get worse as time goes on um, or they worry what other people will think about them and all of those fears are pretty baseless, pretty groundless so if we can properly reassure people that it's not a sign of something else it's probably going to get better rather than get worse and most people live quite comfortable lives despite their hallucinations then that will produce a really positive impact. One of the, the hallmarks of, of the eye disease hallucination are these strange distortions? Uh, or are these um, seeing people in old-fashioned Victorian costumes? Um, I think it might be something to do with the visual information getting into the brain and the way in which eye disease has limited or distorted that information. Um, so the, the brain is always trying to make the very best sense of the information coming into it that it can. But if that information is distorted and partial, it might be the thing that looks least unlike that information is somebody in an old-fashioned costume. It's quite interesting that Charles Lullin, when he described it, he didn't see people in old-fashioned costumes. He saw people in the costumes of the time we suggest it's not something about kind of going back in time. It's something about if you've got little information going in, you're seeing people in big hats, in big skirts, um, kind of pantaloons, that type of thing. Uh, so I think there might be something in about the information coming into the brain, which gives you these characteristic distortions, but no proof. In eye disease, then you should just get hallucinations in the visual sense. If you're getting hallucinations in more than one sense, that's generally a sign that something wider is going on than just sensory loss. So that's always a pointer for investigating further and referring on. There's probably very little you can do to get rid of the hallucinations themselves. Um, so there's scattered case reports of lots of different things having small effects, which probably to me indicates that nothing really works. Um, worthwhile trying them out. If there's another disorder associated, worthwhile 
treating that in its own regard, and it might improve hallucinations. Um, if you can do something to improve vision, worthwhile doing that, but really to improve vision, rather than you're thinking that it's gonna improve the hallucinations in themselves, it can make it worse. So you do see people whose um, hallucinations are triggered by an improvement in their vision. Um, quite rare, but it, it can happen. If you're thinking about um, how do you help people feel comfortable about talking about their hallucinations, um, the best thing is to be comfortable about talking about it yourself. Um, so if you're comfortable and relaxed, they'll be comfortable and relaxed. So having some words that you feel quite happy using and that you can practice uh, and try out with other people is a, is a, um, a good pointer. So what I would tend to do is start from what is known. So we know you've got eye disease. Uh, we know it's like this. So you've, you've already had the consultation. You've got a good working relationship with the person. And then I would say, I'm going to ask about some of the other effects um, that people with eye disease might sometimes experience. Uh, one of the more common ones is that because of their eye disease, they can't see what is there. Their brain tries very hard to fill in the gaps, as it were. So sometimes they might see things which aren't there. So they might see a figure um, which isn't really there because their brain thinks it ought to be there in some way. Uh, or an animal or something like that. It's nothing to be worried about, but it's helpful if we know um, that kind of thing ever happened to you. And I'll kind of just leave it at that point and see what they say. What I wouldn't do is say, well, hallucinations are known sign of madness, so sometimes people don't talk about them. Do you have hallucinations? That, that's not what to do. So what's interesting is that even in people with eye disease, half of them think this isn't to do with the eye disease. So even though they know they've got something wrong with their eyes and their eyes aren't very reliable, they still think this isn't down to my eyes. This is down to something else. And the something else is usually I'm going mad. Or if I'm not going mad, other people will think I'm going mad, which is one of the reasons why people keep these experiences to themselves and remain unnecessarily distressed um, for longer than, than they ought. I think it is very comforting for people to know there are other people with these experiences and to learn from them how to manage them positively. I think every low vision clinic, which is really where you see these things, ought to be publicising the possibility because uh, it could be up to a third of the people going there will have these experiences, many of whom will never have talked about it um, for fear of what the consequences would be. So I think a, a good message, these things do occur the consequences if you talk about them are positive rather than negative um, and we're there to listen. We'll go a long way towards improving care for people.